I tried YouTube automation for 30 days and I was actually successful at it. I was surprised when I was able to make some money from it, but I regretted it so much that I never actually told anyone about it until today. Here's what happened. So in May 2022, I noticed something interesting. A lot of new channels were starting to suddenly get successful just posting other people's TikToks and Instagram reels as YouTube shorts. As someone who's been knee deep in the world of YouTube and a YouTube YouTube consultant for almost two years now, I watched YouTube grow, transform and reinvent itself again and again. So I really wanted to understand why it was that suddenly these channels were blowing up. There was no way in hell that YouTube would allow other people to just post TikToks and Instagram reels and get successful, right? Or maybe YouTube was just heavily promoting shorts at the time and just didn't care about what the content that was being picked up by the algorithm was. Or was it that this kind of shitty re-uploaded content was actually making a lot of money for people? I was both intrigued and disturbed by this thought, but the only way to really know was to actually test it out for myself. So I ran an experiment for 30 days. The aim was just to upload 40 to 60 TikToks of other creators and just post them on YouTube as shorts and see if I can generate money. And if so, how much money could I actually generate? So I didn't want to take any risks here. I only decided to stick with topics that I had some knowledge about and that was either business, finance or of course YouTube. And so the first and most crucial thing I did was to think about how to monetize this venture. And that's where affiliate marketing came into play. Now, in my opinion, affiliate marketing is the quickest way for even a new channel to start making money. So I set out on a mission to find any decent affiliate courses with a commission of $50 or more per sale. So after about an hour or two of searching, I finally found the perfect course on a platform called Digitstore24. It was called Tube Monetization and Automation Program. Now, of course, just by the name, you can understand that it's about YouTube monetization and automation. So it's about YouTube automation. Automation. Perfect, I thought. Why not scam people by selling the exact thing that I'm trying to learn with this experiment? I'm kidding. That wasn't my thought at all. Um, that's why I came to regret it later, to be honest. But anyways, this is where it got interesting. Now, this course was worth over $400. And the minimum commission I would get on it would be 40%, which is about $160. That's insane. I screamed in my mind, at least. No wonder all these YouTube automation gurus are promoting these kind of things. Regardless, I wasted no time and dove straight in to the action. So I spent my whole Saturday, about 10 hours, I think. Um, I decided not to go out with friends, not go out partying, and instead just carefully downloaded about 50 TikToks from these so-called YouTube automation millionaires. So these are people who are claiming that they've become millionaires and they are flexing their watches and their cars and their you know private jets and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the catch here is that I was trying to only get content that had nobody's face in it because if it had somebody's face then it would mean that people would assume that channel was about that person. I wanted it to be as hard for somebody to figure out whose content it was and that was actually fairly simple when I started diving into the niche because most people's content was almost the same. They had the typical flexing car watch you know all that kind of jazz and they used AI generated voices for some reason like the TikTok voiceover voice right they were not actually speaking they were not showing their personality which was very suspicious if i think about it considering if you're trying to sell that you got famous or rich from doing this particular thing ideally you should show your lifestyle not just like you know a random photo of yourself with a car but blur out your face you know that's just kind of weird but regard let's, let's just forget about that even more suspicious was the fact that most of these automation gurus were 16 to 18 year olds and the tiktoks were like i'm 16 year old if i can make a million dollars in 2021 so so can you. So it was those kind of cringy things that you would automatically assume to be scams. The reason for doing this was to actually figure out whether an unethical cycle like this was actually profitable. It felt like a heist, to be honest, like scamming the scammers or so-called people who look like scammers, I guess. But it's just something wasn't sitting right regardless. So anyways, I was ready to forget all about the problems with my chosen path and continue to move on to the next step. So the next step was creating the channel, right? That didn't take too long, nothing to explain there but I spent about 20 minutes crafting a really bad looking banner for 
a channel and a logo on Canva. Um, it's on Canva, so I, you know, you don't expect it to be great. The point wasn't to make something aesthetically amazing. Well, I mean, truly, who really even looks at the YouTube banners and logos and judges people anymore? It doesn't even matter. Unless you're trying to build a personal brand or a brand for your business of any kind, you don't really need the aesthetic to get successful, right? So I knew I needed to focus more than the banner and logo on the important thing, which is building a powerful narrative. I mean, I'm posting other people's TikToks, but how am I going to actually generate sales? Right? People have to be convinced that the stuff that I'm talking about or the stuff that other people are posting in these videos is legitimate. But more than that, they need to have a convincing story. I mean, there are several other YouTube automation programs. And so why would somebody want to watch or buy this one that I'm promoting? I don't even know the name anymore, but compared to other ones that are out there in the market. So this is where the narrative plays an important role. The narrative basically means, you know, how are you convincing somebody that this is the thing they should go for? What narrative what story are you promoting there so the story that i decided to go with was that youtube automation you know it can make you rich blah 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 but more importantly i said and of course this was a lie but i said it in the description and the about section is that i've tried every single youtube automation course and this is the best one and of course i lied but i was actually writing this copy that i wrote based on other people's reviews of the product so i wasn't necessarily lying i was i mean i was lying but i wasn't necessarily telling a lie that this might be you know the best course out there for youtube automation i actually wrote down the copy with taking keywords and phrases and sentences from people who have written reviews and I hope those reviews are legitimate not from people who are also just promoting the thing as an affiliate I hope so but again let's just forget about that too many problems with this <laughs> with this thing so what I did was I spent about 90 minutes I would say I can't remember exactly how long but it was really deep brainstorming work to write really compelling copy that I would put in the about section of the channel um, because again nobody really sees it but I wanted to multitask here so the about section was all also the exact YouTube description I would paste every single TikTok that I re-uploaded on, on YouTube as shots. And that same description or the about and that goes into the description and that description would also be condensed down into about four to five sentences to form the pinned comment for each YouTube shot because you can't really automate the pinned comment uh, even though you can automate uploading the shots on YouTube. So that's really what I did and I think it was smart enough because it eventually came to work out but the stage was set, right? I had had my videos my channel was ready and it was time to just let the automation begin this was not going to take a lot of time i just had to schedule two shots per day for the next 20 days or so so what i did first was schedule for the first 10 days in a batch so 20 shots and i was trying to aim for the golden hour of engagement i experimented with different upload times and i think this is very important and something that a lot of people don't think about is who is the ideal target audience you're trying to target and so for me it was all about finding the sweet spot when the ideal audience for me, that was just somebody who's interested in YouTube and somebody who can buy a $400 course. So that would ideally mean somebody in the West, not in Asia. Um, somebody ideally in Europe or in, you know, North America, ideally. Or Australia, actually, too. That works. But I only thought about the Europe and America side of things just because those are with similar time zones, even though US has multiple, but similar time zones. So I was experimenting with time zones when those people are most active. And usually, who are people? looking into YouTube automation it's something that I understood because I spent you know 10 hours actually watching that content um, it was not fun <laughs> again but those 10 hours really taught me about who are these people who are watching this kind of content and it was usually 16 to 20 to 22 year olds so it's people who are in school or in college so what are the times that they are ideally going to be most active it's either in the mornings or during like lunch breaks or after school hours after you know university hours I guess so that would be evenings i was targeting these different times and experimenting with 30 minute you know differentiation uploads so it's like okay on saturday i upload at let's say 12 pm on sunday i upload at 12 30 on monday i upload at 1 pm you know that kind of thing and i was really experimenting with what times would work best so i did that right content was scheduled alarms were set this also helped me figure out what kind of titles would work best just because i had consumed that content for 10 hours yeah i know i've been reminding you too much uh, it was hell but the content was scheduled and i set alarms to remind me twice daily to add a pinned comment again 
again since you can't automate that with scheduled uploads so i had to set alarms to as soon as the video goes up put a pinned comment just in case you know a few people see it and they see the copy or they read the description and they decide to buy the course so i did that and within 10 days the traffic was slowly increasing right there were some hateful comments calling youtube automation a scam which i was honestly glad about because looking into the thing on tiktok at least it seemed like a scam uh, it just did but again comments were still coming in very slowly but they were coming in engagement was low but a few videos started to pick up i was getting 400 500 600 views but nothing crazy but then the unexpected happened after about two weeks in so that's around 30 shots uploaded right trouble came knocking at the door videos started getting copyright claimed like crazy i think almost half of the videos at this point on the channel were copyright claimed and so they just stopped getting views completely and the reason was that many of these tiktoks had popular music on it and that was just the issue again because these people who were making these videos were not talking they were not showing their face at least the ones i downloaded and they were just using ai generated voices so and sometimes not even actually any voice just background music i could change the background music for some of them but for those that had ai voices i could not really do much and i did not want to put in too much effort just to see even if with little effort somebody can make good money out of it so that was a reality check and a stark reminder that not everything that glitters is gold but it was also personally that i was glad about this that not every newcomer can just you know slap some videos on youtube and download them from here and there and just make some money so i was glad and i started to write this off as a failed or maybe successful experiment knowing that you know people can't really easily make money off of it but i wrote this off and then i stopped uploading videos about 23 days in again the numbers are very hazy in my mind but i'm young so i think i have a decent enough memory still thankfully um so i gave up and i just didn't feel the urge to continue for the next seven days because of all the copyright hits and everything i just thought it's just not gonna work right then i forgot about um at this point no money has been made you know no video has even crossed a thousand views and i think okay it's just not working i guess youtube has figured out that if you know content that's posted from another platform maybe i don't know but after a month that i had already abandoned the channel a paypal notification popped up on my screen 176 dollars were credited to my account now that was too little money to come from a client and it was surely not gonna come from any of my older youtube channels because they were dead for a really long time so a sale from this experimental channel potentially that's what i thought i traced back and found that one of my last uploaded shots had picked up steam and it got over a thousand views and it was actually getting engagement it had a few comments it had 40 plus likes which was way above the average i think on average even for 500 views i was getting like five to six likes at the time so the initial feeling of joy was intoxicating i was glad that i didn't waste my time you know those how many ever 15 hours or whatever but the excitement wore off very quickly and it was replaced by a sense of unease discomfort right here's the honest truth I felt absolutely terrible. The idea of making money off of someone else's work just didn't sit right with me. It was a very bitter pill to swallow. And the fact that there are gurus out there advocating for practices like this was a very, very harsh thing to just comprehend. So I just couldn't think about anything else for that day. I was just laying in bed thinking about how much money other people might have wasted buying things from someone who may not even be the person the viewer thought they were. But even worse people may have bought stuff from those who may have never even consumed the thing they were selling like i was see i have nothing against affiliate marketing right if you are promoting something you know is truly of value i don't see any problem with it but i knew very very little about this product i just chose it to see how much money could be made and i was certain there were other people who were doing the same but actually making potentially thousands of dollars of this practice with no remorse or at least little to no remorse and that bugged me for a very very long time at least that whole day and i knew what i had to do that money it didn't belong to me at least not ethically so i decided to give it back to society i gave it to a few homeless people um, along with some extra money because i still felt bad and so i just gave it to a few homeless people around my area and i thought of it just as an act of redemption i never told anybody about this but i just want to tell you so i hope you understand that i'm not a scammer i'm not into unethical practices like this and i will never ever take a detour 
down this path again not even as an experiment so here's the truth there are no shortcuts to ethical success there are no get rich quick schemes and youtube automation in itself seems like a niche full of liars cheaters and manipulators so let's just keep youtube a platform for creativity originality and respectable content and please i hope you're not one of those people who get an idea from this video and try to do the thing that i did with no remorse if you are please fuck off from this channel i don't want you here but if you actually want to make ethical content that you are going to be proud of and build a sustainable long-term brand on youtube that is original and with respectable content that will actually help you scale your revenue check out this video where i completely break down the nine different youtube algorithms yes there's nine of them and i explain every single one in as much detail as i know over the last seven years of being on youtube and working with people who have millions of subscribers and if you just understand this you'll be miles ahead of everyone else in your niche